need to be the last one up. I need to <laughs> like to call to order the regular meeting agenda on Monday, February 22nd. Um, would you please join Council Member Stiff in the Pledge of Allegiance and stay standing for the invocation? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. O oh God, whose strength is made perfect in weakness, grant us humility and childlike faith that we may please you in both will and in deed. Give us wisdom to do your will for our city and protect the men and women serving this nation, both locally and abroad. In your name, we are bold to pray. Amen. 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 Councilman Stipp, we're all here. At the, thank you very much for the prayer oh. of the night. We're all here, so let's go to the communication. We have two communication items tonight. And the first item, members of the Goodyear Arts and Culture Commission will share highlights from the 2016 Art and Culture Expo held on Saturday, February 6th at Loma Linda Park in the historical Goodyear. Kailene Aslansky, Arts and Culture Coordinator to present. Kailene? Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, thank you. Um, tonight, uh, I am joined with Commissioners Laura Kano and Commissioners Catherine Miller. Um, Laura Kano will actually be the one presenting tonight. Um, I did want to share just um, how exciting it is to be able to be here to introduce our Arts and Culture Commission. The Art of Cultures Expo was an event that had been in the planning process for quite a few years and was a vision of that group. And they're such a dynamic group of Goodyear residents. They've brought it to fruition, and this is the sec second year of this event. With that, I'm going to turn this over to Laura. Welcome, Laura. Thank you, Mayor and Council. All right, as you heard, we've, we just recently held our event. There was over 1,500 people who attended, which was about a 25% increase. I know that number of you were also there. We had 12 cultural performances, 40 folk artisans, a car show, and over 300 youth and adults worked with professional artists in the vis area of visual arts. This was the Mobile History Museum, and we were lucky to have the Three Rivers uh, Historical Society act as docents, and they reported that it was very well attended, a lot of interaction and learning about the history of Goodyear. And these are our two of our commissioners as they greeted people and welcomed them and got the vendors all set up. And as Gailleen said, this was a signature event. And the, the purpose was not only just a multicultural uh, event, but was to look at the folk life, the traditions, and the folk cultures of the West Valley. And the art was to be based on, the, on culture and the artisans. This was a honey farmer from Buckeye, and he was demonstrating the art of beekeeping. This was the lion dance representing the Chinese culture. We had an African drum circle, and these were not professionals. They were members from the audience who joined in and, and as part of that. The car exhibit was a big hit. We had muscle cars, classic cars, all kinds of cars, low riders. We wanted to put a shout out, thank you, to the Australia Mountain Car Club, as well as those community members who brought their own vehicles out. As you can see, it was great attendance. So over 125 uh, participants made things with clay, which actually gave them the ability to take something home. And we wanted to thank the WAM Art Association for putting on this event. This was a lot of fun. It was from St. John Vianney School. It's the Matachinas, and they did native dance. This was fun for me. It was a former co-worker, City of Phoenix, uh, John Dermody, he got our toes tapping with the accordion, a lot of polkas and uh, 
Italian and French, all kinds of things. He was a lot of fun. So each artisan provided a table where it gave an opportunity for an interactive activity throughout the day, reflecting the very different assets and facets of art. These are intense artists working away on a project. This was Ballet Folklorico Esperanza out of Avondale. They had a great following. And a variety of the artisans also brought in items for display representing their culture. This is Navajo, but they also had items for sale. You look in the corner, you can see Mayor Lord in the bright red jacket, but it, there was a, a number of people enjoying the event. Say God bless our library staff who are there in makeup and masks all day long making buttons for the children. This is Rage Reggae music, and that's Patrick Murillo. This was a lot of fun. Jukebox is a hip-hop school. It's a local business in Goodyear off of Bullard. Another member of Raza, Raza Reggae. You can see these kids are just enthralled by the art projects. Another picture of the Matachinas. <coughs> Very colorful dance by Corrine Vivers. And in closing, you can see there was a lot of kids, a lot of adults. It was multicultural, multi-generational. It was a great day. Thank you so much for the opportunity to present. Thank you very much. Let's give a round of applause. Uh, any comments that people were there uh, would like to? Cheryl in. I just have a comment. I don't have a question. But I just wanted to compliment you on the variety that was there. The, and everybody was happy. I mean, it was, uh, I always go around to vendors to see, you know, how was your day? How did it go? Would you come, you know, just to see, get a, a feel for how they feel. And everybody was happy. And happy vendors, all happy vendors are such a rarity that um, I really need to compliment you on that. And I also want to compliment the, uh, the people who have put together and manned the Goodyear Museum because every time I go through it, I learn something new. And um, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Wally? Well, I enjoyed it, and I, um, I saw several of the performances. It was really pretty fun. And Kathy and I had a lot of fun catching up because it's. I like to go to these events because I see so many of you that I don't have an opportunity to be with during the day. But it was really a lot of fun. It was different than last year, and I thought it was very well executed and planned. And I had too many people asking me if I could help them get the red Corvette. They thought it was a raffle prize. And I kept telling them, no, no, no. But that was an idea. I said, maybe we could sell raffle tickets next year for something. Um, but thank you all very much. It was very well attended. And uh, Dr. Denise Barnes put together our museum. And it is just fabulous. And every time I come across anything old, I get it to her or tell her I have it so that we can share it. But it's just telling our story and our history. And everyone that goes through there learns a little bit more about our wonderful, wonderful city and how we started. And thank you all for having it at every event we do as a city. I just want to say thank you. Unfortunately, I was out of town during uh, that weekend. And uh, I, I just have to say, though, that the fact that you're bringing culture to our lives, culture to our citizens, I mean, it really does make an impact. And, and people learn things. And, and as Sherilyn said, you're always going to feel good about things like that. And, you know, it, it kind of spurs that interest in people's minds, whether it was history or Native Americans or how to beat those drums. There's always something that will intrigue somebody. So thank you for bringing that to us. Yes. I just, I just want to echo that as well. Thank you so much um, for for this event, all you do, because it is really great to see. I think Wally just nailed it on the head. So many happy people. I mean, just having a good time. And, you know, it's so great to see these type of signature events and every year. And so thank you. Joe? Yeah, I, I was able to attend, and I really appreciated some of the history and the booths and, and went around to the variety of crafts and actually left 
with Mr. Stipp with um, some fresh homemade salsa, which was fantastic, <laughs> by one of your vendors there at the booth. It was great salsa. So, again, great event. Uh, appreciate you. Continue uh, bringing that forward because it seems like each year it gets better and better. So, again, thank you very much. Bill? Yeah, yeah there's not a whole lot, uh, you know, left to say, but it, it was uh, – it, it was a beautiful day, which was very helpful. Um, but uh, it, it was just, it was great to see, you know, again, the variety. And I think that was most, um, most surprising to me. Uh, but even the, the hands-on, I thought was really important. And the, you had a picture of one of the artists that um, was having people sign the, uh, her artwork and then she was going to you know, donate that or something back. And it was just, it was very different. It was different and it was, it was, uh, it was very unique. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to advertise that more in the future and, and kind of get the word out. Um, it, it, and sometimes I'm jaded because I know that it's coming, so I don't pay attention to what's going on in the paper um, or wherever. So um, I'd like to, you know, obviously get more folks out there, but it was a good day. So thanks. Well, just quickly, congratulations. It was a, <clears throat> a big success. <clears throat> and there were so many vendors and so many variety of vendors. But I have to say, mainly it was in the park with the big round trees, right. the trees that we all saved. And so I couldn't help but uh, think about that. It, the atmosphere was just absolutely perfect. So uh, congratulations, and thank you for all your hard work because that isn't easy to organize something so large as that one was. But it was equal to many cities in the valley now i mean this this was a, a, a large one in comparison so thank you thank you for all your work thank you thank you mayor council <laughs> okay the next item is to preview the 2016 spring training promotions and opening days festivals festivities excuse me bruce kessman ballpark general manager to present good evening mayor and council it is that exciting time of the year, pitchers and catchers reporting, full squadron reporting, getting ready for the first workout, which means opening day is not too far behind. In fact, uh, next Tuesday, opening day, March 1st, 105 scheduled first pitch, and we hope that Mayor, you and council members can join us and celebrate the eighth spring training season here in Goodyear. Uh, from opening day, we move into opening weekend with the bobblehead giveaways, which are pictured there. Uh, very popular promotion over the last years. And we have the Joey Votto uh, for the Reds and Jason Kipnis for the Indians. Uh, returning again this year will be brunch at the ballparks. We have those scheduled on two days, which uh, for the Reds game will be on March 6th as well, coupled with the bobblehead giveaway and on the 18th for, for the Indians. And this is just really a unique opportunity for fans to come out and experience something different at a ballpark. Uh, the Indians actually come up and take batting practice during brunch, which is a, a very unique experience to uh, be able to have brunch and, you know, watch the team take BP up there. Uh, also returning are the happy hours. We open up the gates two hours early on all five of our night games and food and drink specials right up until first pitch. And also please make note that uh, we do have one night game that's going to start a little bit earlier. We're going to try a 6.05 game uh, on the 29th, uh, especially during the week nice. to kind of see how that goes. Uh, we know 7.05 and getting home a little bit later, so trying a 6.05 game this year. And, of course, uh, the ever-popular fireworks nights. We do have two fireworks uh, scheduled on the, uh, the 12th for the Reds and the 19th for the Indians. And as you remember, last year we did set a record uh, on the Indians versus Angels game. Uh, we're on pace right now for the 19th. Uh, as of uh, close of business today, we're already sold over 8,000 tickets for the, for the 19th, which is the Indians versus Cubs. So if you need tickets for the 19th, get them quick. Also returning for the third straight year is the Fan Fest. Uh, after the game, uh, opportunity for uh, fans to come out and get autographs from both the Indians and the Reds players. Uh, every Sunday will be Kids Day at the ballpark where we really cater to the kids, uh, kind of in conjunction with the reading program that we launched last year. Um, we'll bring in more inflatable activities. We're actually having character meet and greets, so the favorite uh, characters, princesses, will be out there on hand uh, for kids to take pictures with. And last year, we even had some of the kids go up and announce batters during the innings, which was just a great experience for them. Uh, since we are home this year on, uh, on Easter Sunday, uh, bringing back the extravaganza, last year uh, did a little bit smaller scale, had about 3,000 eggs, almost 500 kids out there. Uh, it was more of a, a gathering 
as you can kind of see by the picture, uh, this year we'll have over 5,000 eggs and probably expecting about 700 kids out there. So uh, it went pretty quick last year. We're hoping for a record on that and get it done in about 30 seconds <laughs> to get the eggs. And we'll round out our uh, season with the Fan Appreciation Day, uh, March 31st. It's an Indian Spreads game. Uh, giveaways every inning. And it's just an opportunity for us to wish our teams well as they start the regular season. Along with these, uh, those promotions, we have daily ticket promotions, uh, bringing back the Senior Saver Pass every Tuesday through Thursday. Uh, $20 ticket also includes a $5 voucher for concessions. Again, continuing with the military appreciation, uh, free ticket to all active duty, retired, and uh, reserve military. And in, new for this year, we're actually starting a veteran discount as well. We're offering the veterans a half price ticket in select seating sections. That was kind of a group that was kind of left out of the military appreciation. Um, so we kind of developed this program to, to cater to that group as well. Uh, child pricing will continue half, t uh, half price tickets in the outfield reserve, uh, outfield box, and berm seating sections. And of course, when our two teams play each other, uh, dollar berm days. Buy one uh, ticket and get one for a dollar. And something really special for us this year, we're going to be welcoming our one millionth fan. And according to, uh, to our estimations right now and kind of our, our first look at it, uh, we're expecting that to happen the week of March 13th through the 19th. Of course, we'll have some festivities at the gates, uh, giveaways uh, for one lucky fan that, uh, that is our millionth fan. And you can watch the daily countdown on Facebook and Twitter. And also we'll let you guys know uh, when that millionth fan is going to enter our gates so you can be a part of that celebration. And as we're getting ready for the season here, here's a kind of a first look at what the new concessions branding with our new partners, Professional Sports Catering, is going to look like. Uh, those are in production right now and are scheduled to be done and hung be before opening day. Really excited about going into this year. Uh, got a lot of great things planned and hope everybody can join us. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great presentation. We're all excited. Does anybody want to go first here? Bill? Yeah, uh, I'm going to uh, in my I'm going to say my usual format. I'm going to be the first uh, downer. I'm going to be gone for most of the spring training season oh. this year, so um, I'm going to miss opening days and even the uh, the the event on on Thursday the 25th before uh, before spring training even starts. So um, I know you and your staff have been working very very hard and um, looking forward to a to a great season. Um, the partnership that we have with the Reds and the Indians. Uh, continues to get stronger year after year, and that um, I don't know that we could have uh, asked for a, a better a better situation. So, uh, you know, the proverbial tip of the hat to you and and the uh, and the gang down at the ballpark, and uh, have a great have a great season. Thanks. Thank you. Bill, I too am going to be late to the game. I'm t molding fine young minds over at Grand Canyon University, and my class starts right about the time the game kicks off. But I'm going to try to get there before the game closes out. And I, but I do appreciate all that you do. And, uh, again, uh, I know we're number one in spring training for a reason. So uh, keep up the great work. Sherry? I've had several people the last couple of years just say that they came to our stadium and how much fun they had and, you know, that it was a really great atmosphere. I think we've seen that echoed. Um, so I am looking forward to being there on opening day, and I'm ditching work. So unlike these two that are, like, going to actually work, I'm going to ditch. So I will be there. Sherilyn? <laughs> I think I feel bad for you, Bill, because this is, you know, there are certain things about being on council that they're more fun than others. This is one of them. It, it really is. It's, it's, uh, you do a good job, and it's fun to see the joy of the people who come to the park to enjoy the, the facility. So keep it up. Molly? Well, I'm going to be there, so I'm not going to miss anything. Um, I've already been told my children are all flying in. One family, one week, one family, one week one family, one week. So you'll see all of us out there all the time. But I do want to thank you and your staff. This is a tremendous undertaking. And I know y'all have worked hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours playing every scenario that could happen to make us safe, to give us a good experience, and to make this a fun thing for our city and for all of our um, visitors. Um, 
we appreciate all that you do, even though we may not say that. So please let your staff know how much all of us appreciate all that's going in to make this one of the most successful spring trainings for Goodyear. Thank you. Thanks Brian? So long. Well, I know that uh, you've done a lot of hard work, and it's looking good, some of the things you're pre uh, presenting to us. I also think that um, you're going to do better than last year. You're going to you remember last year you had the, the most ticket sales we ever had, right? So, you know, um, I'm looking forward to that number this year, too. Uh, and some of the other activities that you're having there, that's, that's really cool. I also think it's exciting when I see – you know, our community start to, and the businesses around us start to do things. I, I saw on Twitter that Saddle Mountain Brewery was doing um, some uh, name a beer for the, <laughs> for That's the, correct. right, right. And uh, I actually, I put in, I put in something for that, but um, I think that's really cool. And it's, it's exciting for just the whole city to, to get around it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you for all the work that you and your team have been doing. As you know, I, I went to the Red Fest and the, and the uh, Indian Fest um, in Cleveland, and so we, we know that there's going to be more people from Ohio this time than ever before. But just a sidebar, today I received a letter from a grandmother whose son and wife and grandchildren are coming oh, fun. to the, on the 8th, March 18th, and they wanted me to make sure that somehow we could meet or do this, but they were going on to say what fans they were of the Cleveland Indians and, and kind of trace through a history of all the games that they had been to. So people are really excited. Our community is excited, and uh, Ohio is excited. So um, it's worth all the work that you've done, the pre-work before the opening day we play ball. So thanks so much. Thank you, and thank you for your support, too, going to Ohio, Ohio and welcome. going to Red Fest and Tri-Fest. I noticed Jason and Kipnis picture, Jason's Kipnis picture. Mm -hmm. I had my picture taken with him. Absolutely. Remember that? So, yeah, that yeah, bobblehead, I understand. And you're a great ambassador up there for us, and we get a lot of compliments about okay. your. Thank you. Thanks so much. Okay. Right. Thank you. All right, now is the time uh, for citizens who would like to address the city council on any uh, non agenda item. And we did have an email. So, is um, Casey Cannon in? I think she's coming up. Miss Cannon, we we weren't sure if it was Mister and Miss Mrs. So, so um, yes. So I do, I do need to read something to you first. Um, I, when you speak, we be sure to put your name and your address. Um, if anybody needs to help her with that microphone yeah. to get it down, uh, or a hand or a hand microphone. We got a microphone. We can give it to her. That, that's going to be a little difficult, I think. Just pull one of the little. So I just have to read this to you. The council will listen to your comments and may take one of the following. One, respond to criticism. Uh, one is to request the staff investigate and report on the matter you're going to talk about this evening or request that the matter be scheduled a future agenda. And we're very strict on this. This is a state statute. So you have three minutes to speak. The yellow light uh, and the buzzer will let you know you have 30 seconds left to speak. So, again, before you speak, your name and address, please. I am Marlene Dobrin, resident of Pebble Creek in Goodyear, Arizona. I am now working for Envoy America. They are a senior transportation company. They, their goal is to make sure that every person who doesn't want to drive, can't drive, or shouldn't drive has some form of transportation that they can uh, use, utilize. We are a uh, fee, and, but if you look at our fees, we are on an hourly basis, and if you chart, if you think of what taxis run, we are almost a third less than any taxi company by the hour. Um, our drivers are seniors, young seniors, not old seniors like me, uh, and they are totally... Um, vetted for uh, you know, all the necessary things in order to drive. It is using their own car. They need one day in advance service, and it's door-to-door -door companion service. If someone needs to go to the doctor and then go to the grocery store and do whatever they need, they have hired this person to drive them 
to do whatever they want to do. Um, we are, as I said, we are very competitive. We, it is not a matter, though, that you can't call us the last minute. It's a day in advance. Uh, it's, as someone said, it's Uber for seniors without the credit card, without the uh, cell phone. It's the old-fashioned call up on the phone, and it's charged by the charge card. I do have information here uh, to pass out to you. Uh, I have my business card, and my name is on here, and you're welcome to call me. But if you want to schedule rides or give, have anyone have information, have them call the office because they might not get me, but the office is always there. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to address you. Well, thank you issues. very much. We'll certainly take it to the diocese. here. Somebody, the city manager will take that information for you. Well, I, I have rate sheets on the back and information. Thank you very much. One more thing, if I have a Yes. Hired by Casey Kanan and Andy Baran, and they started it because their mothers needed help in driving, and they were in other states and could not do what they should be doing. And as they like to build a company, Envoy America is the son or daughter's substitute for taking care of mom or dad. Oh, Thank nice. you so much. Thank you. It's Thanks, perfect Marlene. timing. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience that would like to speak? All right, then let's go on to the consent agenda. Will the city clerk please read the consent agenda items 6.1 and 6.2 by title only, please? Item 6.1, approved draft minutes from a regular meeting held on February 8, 2016. Item 6.2, adopt resolution number 16-1717, establishing the Water Conservation Committee, providing for the termination of the Water Conservation Committee, adopting bylaws for the Water Conservation Committee, authorizing the city manager and or appropriate staff to take all actions necessary to carry out the intent of the resolution and establishing an effective date. Thank you. Does anyone on the public wish to remove an item on the consent agenda? Does anyone on the council wish to remove an item? All right, then could I please have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. I heard a, a motion by Councilman Holman and a second by Councilman, a, a motion by Councilman Holman, second by Councilman Bazillo. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Loritano? Aye. Council Member Osborne? Aye. Council Member Pazillo? Aye. Council Member Campbell? Aye. Council Member Stipp? Aye. Council Member Holman? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Passes 7 0. All right, we're on the business item 7.1 is, is the reappointments and reappointments and appointment to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Katie Wilkin, Planning Manager, to present. Welcome, Katie. Thank you, Mayor and members of the Commission. I'm very pleased to be before you tonight to request that Council reappoint Randy Barnes, Patrick Bray, Kathleen Maloney, and Kathleen Short to the Plan Planning and Zoning Commission as recommended by the subcommittee for um, Commission Board and Committee appointments. Um, all four of these members have been serving on the Planning, for, planning Commission for some time. Um, Kathleen Maloney has been there for a year serving out um, Leslie Miller's term, and the other three have been there for um, over three years. Um, the second item would be to appoint a new member, Michelle Walters, um, to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Michelle is a um, public, I'm sorry, Palm Valley resident, and she works for U-Haul, and she um, brings some business um, expertise to the um, table. She's actually been on the other side of the table, um, so she'll make a great addition to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, and she um, came across from many um, qualified applicants and three um, extremely superb interviews. Um, she was selected. So that is, um, we actually have two, I think, of the commission members are here. Um, they were all here, but because of the time, they had to run, so they apologize for that. I was about that, because I know we were a um, late, so. But two of the members are here to um, take their oath. All right, great. Thank you. Um, so um, would anybody, in, are there any speaker cards on this? No, would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right. So could I please have a motion? So it's the first one. A motion is second to reappoint point Randy Barnes, Patrick Bray, Kathleen Maloney, Kathleen Short to the Planning and Zoning Commission, each for a three-year term expiring January 31st, 2019, 
or until the successors are appointed and qualified. Do I hear a motion? So move. Second. A, mo a motion from Councilman Campbell and a second from Vice Mayor, I mean, I always want to put you Vice Mayor, don't I? <laughs> Councilman Pazillo. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. All right, let's go to the second one. Could I have a motion a second to appoint Michelle Walters to the Planning and Zoning Commission to fulfill Vicki Hamilton's term expiring February 9th, 2018, or until her successor is appointed and qualified? Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. All right, I heard this, and it was like three voices. So who was it? Was that you, Vice Mayor? Okay, Vice Mayor Lortano, the motion, and then who seconded and Councilman Stiff was the second. Um, I didn't ask the first one any discussion on this, so any discussion? All right, then let's vote for it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. No. Okay, so we had one, 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 nay. Na one nay. All right, so now the city clerk will administer the oath of loyalty for those that are here, and I'm assuming then later they'll be coming to the office to do that. All right. Actually, I will be giving the oath to the planning right before the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting uh, okay. for the next one. All right, great. All right, Kathleen Maloney and Patrick Bray, can you please come on up for the oath? And I'll need you to hold up your right hand, please, and repeat after me. I. 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 State your name. Kathleen Maloney. Maloney. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm. That I will support. That, that I will support, support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution and laws, and the Constitution and laws of the State of Arizona, in the State of Arizona, that I will bear true faith, and I will bear true faith, and allegiance to the same, and allegiance to the same, and defend them, and defend them against all enemies, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic, and that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully and impartially, and impartially discharge the duties, discharge the duties of planning and zoning commissioner, planning and zoning commissioner, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. So I do affirm. So I do affirm. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Ms. Mm -hmm. I guess generally speaking, I. Okay, so that. we want to congratulate you and thank you for all your work and your continuation. And I think we have some council people would like to make a comment. So, Councilman Osborne. Thank you. Well, you too. I really appreciate everything that you've done for us and, and advising us and vetting all these different cases that come before you. I understand the work that, that goes into it, and I truly, truly appreciate what you're doing. Thank you very much. Councilman Stiff. Yeah, I'd like to echo that. Um, the work of the Planning Commission, Planning and Zoning Commission, is probably one of the most thankless jobs uh, that you'll ever do for free. Um, but it is so important for our community and the work that um, that you continue to do uh, month in, month out. Um, and the information that you provide to us um, is invaluable and uh and i just appreciate everything that that you do for us any other yeah, uh, councilman uh why do i want to call you to yeah, first call yeah that's hey, right you, that yeah, I, it's tonight council vice mayor loritano i i just wanted to thank you and congratulate y'all and and you'll do a phenomenal job um it's very important especially as we grow so thank you any others well councilman holman I, too, want to thank you. I really consider planning and zoning one of the most important contributions made to the city that is to assist the council. Um, it is a challenging job, and you have risen to the occasion. And as being part of the subcommittee that, that reviewed, reviewed the applications, it was wonderful to see the number of people that care. Oh, I'm so sorry. That care about the city of Goodyear, as you do and are, are willing to put in the kind of time that it takes. So please share with your, your cohorts that you're, they're greatly appreciated. Any other comments? I want to thank you, and I think we all truly feel this, the number of hours and dedication you put in, because you're much like the council. You have, you have homework, <laughs> and then you have to go, and you have to discuss it and vote on it. It's not just like showing up at a meeting and sitting down in a chair and having conversation. So it was a lot of forethought to that. And so we greatly appreciate this. And please, uh, 
please refer this, these comments to your counterparts on the, on the board because uh, uh, it's so true about all of them. We really appreciate it. So thank you very much. Okay, Katie, so that it? Right, that's it. Okay, so we're now the next item is to consider appro approving, approving the preliminary, boy, I'm having a hard time tonight, preliminary plat for the Estrella Commons. Katie Wilkin, again, will present. Katie? Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Estrella Commons is located between Interstate 10 and Van Buren Street and between Estrella Parkway and the Bullard Wash. The zoning for the parcel was approved by City Council on April 13, 2015 by Ordinance 15-1321. The zoning allowed um, for the development of up to 365 single-family lots, as well as a, menu, um, a multi-family parcel and two um, mixed-use commercial parcels that were preliminarily zoned. The preliminary plat before you is subdividing just the single-family residential portion. The preliminary plat is consistent with the zoning. It is 105 acres um, being split into 365 single family lots. There are two points of access from Roosevelt and Fillmore that connect to Australia Parkway. There's also a third connection that goes through the Rancho Mirage neighborhood, which was planned when the Rancho Mirage neighborhood was developed. The internal roadways are proposed as public streets. There is a central park proposed um, that's seven acres and is consistent with the park's plan. Um, the development is consistent with the zoning and all subdivision regulations. Um, the Planning and Zoning Commission um, considered this item at their meeting last Wednesday and they recommended <coughs> approval um, unanimously by a five to zero vote. And I apologize for not including a summary of the Planning Commission meeting in your packet. We've been trying out some different processes to help our customers. So we were testing out taking a um, item from Planning Commission to City Council very quickly. So um, to um, help our customer along in the process. Um, so that concludes my um, presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, Ed Bull and Laura Ortiz are also present representing the applicant. Thank you very much, Katie. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? Yes, Mr. Bull is coming forth. I think you know, I think you know the regulations here, so your name and address and your timing. Thank you, Mayor. Ed You're Bull, welcome. 702 East Osborne. As Katie mentioned, I'm here with Laura Ortiz from Evergreen tonight. First and foremost, we appreciate the recommendations for approval from both the commission and staff. We accept the stipulations. If you have questions or concerns or want a full presentation from us, we'll be happy to provide it. Otherwise, if you all are comfortable with the recommendations, so are we. So I turn to you if you want a presentation. I'm guessing it would be better if I just sat down. Thank you. Appreciate that. Could I please have a motion and a second to approve the preliminary plat for the Estrella Commons subdividing 105.6 acres into 365 single-family lots generally located southeast of Interstate 10 and Australia Parkway subject to stipulations. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second? Second. I heard... Motion from Councilman Stiff and a second from Councilman Holman. Uh, open for council discussion. Who would like to start? Councilman Bazillo. Probably a question for Katie. I just need to be refreshed, Katie. Along I-10, there's going to be a, what, a sound wall there? Thank you. Yes, there is a sound wall and additional landscaping than normally would be required. How, how tall is that wall going to be? Um, it's up to 20 feet tall, but it depends on where it is. Let me ask you this. One of my biggest concerns when I voted against it besides the homes being there initially, was this, this part about walling off our city, you know? And, you know, for example, the big wall that's sitting alongside of Walmart, I'm not a big fan of because anybody traveling through our city, if they were looking to stop, they'll blow right by Walmart because they wouldn't even see it. Um, that wall height, as that goes up, is that going to block the view of people heading west to see our industrial park off of uh, Australia Parkway? Is it going to be that tall? They envision it to be that tall. Um, thank you, Mayor Councilmember. I'm I'm not sure which industrial. No, I'm talking about is they're oh. coming. Yeah, no, they're coming on ten, and you're looking for a straight. You know, where Australia Parkway is. All right. Is it going to be blocking the view so that they'll know that they're coming upon a commercial area because the wall is so high? 
I'm, I'm just visualizing the wall, you know, where Walmart is, where that wall is next to Walmart. You can't even see it behind there when you're on I-10. You know, I, I guess what I'm saying, I'm hoping it's not tall enough. I can appreciate the sound in a buffer, but I figure anybody who's buying there already knows there's a freeway. You can't miss it, all right? So I would appreciate, in my view, the height of that because my concern is that it would block off, I'm always concerned about walling off our community where we get a lot of traffic coming through I-10. It hopefully would stop and, and uh, will buy at several of our local businesses. And I'm trying to envision how high that would be is because, again, I'm not a big fan of the one along Walmart because it really blocks Walmart and everything that's behind it. Will it block the view of people heading west that we actually have a commercial area off of Australia Parkway? Does that make sense? Thank you, Mayor. Um, Council Member Pizzillo, yes, I do understand um, the question. And um, there wasn't any site visibility study that I know of done with the noise study for the wall. And I'm looking at the applicant in case they have additional information. And I'm flipping through the noise study <laughs> that was conducted to see if there's any exhibit. And actually, the noise study does say it gets up to 16 feet. That probably won't. Yeah, it probably won't be tall enough because that's kind of that's kind of raised there. But I, um, I mean, the the answer I have for you tonight is that you know the height of the wall was determined through a noise study um, that was conducted according to the city regulations. But there isn't a site visibility you know, exhibit included in that to study the issue that you're questioning. Yep. Um, likely, I, I would I would suppose that for that commercial area, which Evergreen does own that commercial parcel that's vacant right now next to Walmart, that they would be just as concerned about the visibility of that since they want to sell that and be um, wanted to develop successfully. And I would also um, foresee that they would be requesting some kind of freeway pylon sign and would make sure that that height was appropriate with the wall and any other surrounding development around it. But I can't give you a definitive answer to your question okay. because there was no study, um, site visibility study done. And I appreciate that. My concern is, is that the businesses that are along I-10, you know, are not hindered as a result of mm -hmm. people traveling on I-10 that don't necessarily live in our community that don't see what's behind, you know, Australia and may want to stop as they further their trip or whatever. I just hate for our businesses to lose out on that opportunity because they can't see what's behind it. So I'm hoping either down the road, maybe a pylon sign or hopefully it's not high enough. So people heading west will notice that there is a commercial site right off of Australia where they can get off and refuel or get something to eat or buy some things. And, and again, that's always been my concern with that wall up against uh, Walmart, because if you're heading, you know, from west to east, you don't even see it till you pass it. It's gone. The wall is so tall there. So, um, but, but I appreciate the feedback, and I'm hoping down the road that we don't hinder any of our businesses along there as a result of the, the wall being too tall. That's, that's my main concern. Thank you, Council Member. Um, I definitely appreciate all your comments, and we will discuss with the applicant um, what we can do to ensure okay. that there is visibility. Any other comments? Councilman Stipp. I, um, it was funny. The, uh, the other day I was driving down a stray apart – Technically, that's up Estrella Parkway, um, and happened to s notice the new signage for the property uh, that's for sale. And then I noticed there were people walking in the dirt. And then the next day, the agenda came out, and here we are tonight. So, um, one of the things that we've, you know, been struggling with is getting these properties, the infill filled in, and uh, so it, it's very good to see this coming forward. You know, hopefully there'll be dirt, real dirt being moved and and uh, roads being cut and, and that, that, that sort of thing. So um, it, it's important uh, for us to fill fill in what we have before, you know, we start going through a sprawl. So I'm very happy to see this, um, this come forward and look forward to the commercial development to follow. Thank you, Bill. Next, Councilman Campbell. Um, Katie, I am assuming since you gave us the fire station response analysis that fire is okay with the location of this subdivision? Um, thank you, Mayor Councilmember Campbell. Yes, I would agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then my next question would be, um, do we have any idea of when they will start building? Um, I think that's a question best answered by the applicant. 
Ed? The question is about uh, the start of construction. I, I, I don't want to put you on a spot, but it would be nice if we had some, she's going to be some year <laughs> to look forward to. Mayor, council member, uh, the anticipation based upon Evergreen's interface with brokers who are very active in the Southwest Valley is if we can get the property platted so that home builders really know what they're looking at and continue with some of the tire kicking or, or dirt kicking that Council Member Stipp was talking about. The brokers are projecting that there's going to be real activity here in approximately a year. That's trying to predict the weather. You know that okay. and you wove that into your question. But it's anticipated that it's the site's turn in the cycle. Well, we're excited because it'll be wonderful to have that site develop. And we, we do believe that the infill aspects of this site is something that's attractive to the home building community. The availability of fire and other infrastructure here is, is a good thing. Um, but we need to let some of the national home builder offices get the same confidence in the home building market in Arizona and in this metropolitan area that some of the local division offices have. And uh, we hope that will occur within the next year. Thank you. And you can tell them how wonderful Goodyear is to work with. I will be happy. Thank to. you. We'll invite them out to a spring training game. Oh, very good. Thank you. Councilman Osborne? On that note, um, I, I figured I'd better say something because this, this is typically one of those cases that, uh, unfortunately, I, I have an opinion on. And um, this is one of those almost half full, half empty glasses for me because I'm torn. And, and the thing is, is I, I'm so thankful for the infill. I'm so thankful for the project. I'm so thankful for Evergreen wanting to build in this area, and, and I appreciate all that. The, the multi-housing, the commercial, that's all uh, wonderful. My, my problem will always be homes against the freeway, and that has never changed in my mind. And so I remember when we had this um, before, I don't know, six months ago or so, and we went over this, and, and, I, and I, that still hasn't changed for me. So I felt that um, I should say something because that – that opinion hasn't changed, and, and I still will be voting against it. But it's not against, unfortunately, it's not against the project. It's against homes against the freeway, and I'm going to stick with my feelings on that. So I wanted to, to put that on record. Thank, Thank you. you. Any of us? Okay, so the discussion is finished. So all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Nay. Opposed? Nay. <laughs> so we have 6-1 vote. Thank you very much. Thank you, Katie. Okay, stay right there because you're on the next one. Uh, the it's business I show. <laughs> yeah, to consider an extension of the El Cedro preliminary plat approval, extending the approval date for one year to August 25th, 2016. So, Katie, you're on. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Um, staff received a request to extend the preliminary plat for the El Cedro development. Um, you likely recall that you just looked at a zoning um, amendment. Um, for this property on December 14th, 2015, which was approved by Ordinance 15-1327. Um, the applicant shortly thereafter submitted final plats for um, certain portions of the property, and so they are moving forward with the property. But once the final plats were submitted, um, staff noticed that both the staff and applicant um, allowed the preliminary plat to expire. And so in order to keep the development moving forward, we're requesting that you extend the preliminary plat so that they can then get their final plats, which they've already submitted and are planning on moving forward with um, extended. Um, that they um, do plan on some portions of those first phases to be coming to council again, hopefully this spring for the final plat approval, and then that would um, that would approve the entire final plat. I'm sorry, I'm losing my the preliminary plat. I'm forgetting the word. Um, it wouldn't expire then as soon as one phase of the final plat was approved. Um, so that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer questions any questions, and Scott Moore representing the applicant is also available. Thank you very much. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? 
All right, then um, could I have a motion and a second to approve the extension for the El Cedro preliminary plat approval extending the approval date for one year to August 25th, 2016. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Vice Mayor Loritano and a second by uh, Councilman Campbell. Open for council discussion. I had a question. Councilman Campbell. All righty, Katie. Um, this is the first time that I can recall um, in a long time that uh, we actually got uh, item by item of what is causing the delay which I really appreciate because it makes me uh, more aware of how complicated it is to get this stuff done. But my question, I guess it's to the city attorney. Um, in the letter, they stipulate that the West Goodyear core agreement is still not done. Do we expect that any time in the next two or three or four years? I mean, it was supposed to be done in December. And we keep extending and extending and extending. So if we if we give these folks a year extension and that agreement isn't done, they're not going to be able to move forward. And so I'm, I'm worried about it. Sure. And, and, and no, you certainly understand that. Uh, as a brief counsel, we did send out the original core agreement back in December, and the, the complexity of this agreement and reaching core terms is the, the multitude of parties um, that need to weigh in and agree to all the core terms uh, for the agreement. We're still waiting some of that feedback. Uh, we've been diligently working on that core agreement over the last two months, starting with we did get some initial comments back, I believe towards the end of December, they've slowly been trickling in. Uh, and we've been reformatting and revising the core agreement to get out, to get the parties back together. But we do anticipate the next month to two months to having that back to council. And it'll be done? That is our hope. We, again, it's getting all these parties to agree on that core agreement and all the same terms for all the parties. Well, I, yeah, I, I, kind of, I understand it and I kind of understand the legalese, but what concerns me is that that's not, for whatever reason we're not successful, it looks bad on us because it's coming out of our legal office. It's not coming out of the developer's offices. It's coming out of us. And I, I just am so concerned that we're sending the wrong message because if we can't get these developers in a reasonable length of time, what's to say we're going to have this opportunity again with many other developers, and then they're going to say, well, we don't want to work with Goodyear. It takes too long. I certainly recognize that. The, the, the difficulty here is you're not dealing with just one party. You're dealing I with know. a multiple multitude of parties that have to reach agreement on the same terms. But we've had good success. We're getting a lot of good feedback from the developers, and we're pretty close. It's just getting the final document put together and awaiting that outstanding feedback from those developers we have not heard from. And frankly, so there's several by, we may not hear from. So was this letter written by one of the lawyers of the group? Excuse me? No, well, this letter was from one of the consultants. Consultants? Or the project manager for the project. Oh, right. Okay. This is from the El Cedro group okay. related yeah. to their extension I read request. The letter, but I didn't yeah. Know who it's well, I appreciate to. our staff uh, working with them to help them lower some of their cost and to to, to be uh, helpful to them to move their project forward because we need to do whatever it takes to get this development going, and and we just appreciate them wanting to hang in with us even longer. And whoever decided or whoever saw that it was running out or has expired, thank you for bringing it to everybody's attention to get it, get an extension. So they didn't have to start all over. Thanks, Katie. Councilman Stipp. Katie, did, is this what we did in December? Was the preliminary plan? Mm -mm. No, thank you, Mayor, Council Member Stipp. Um, the December. decision in, in December was to alter the um, development regulation, so to allow a five-foot side yard setback rather than a ten-yard set, ten-foot side yard setback. The preliminary plat was approved um, back in August of 2014. Okay, that. I think that's what I thought. Um, And we, I hate to even say it like this, but we think a year is enough time to get this done. 
I mean, at this point, we've been talking about this project since I think 06. Um, yes, um, thank you, Mayor Council Member Stipp. We do, um, as I said, they have already submitted their final plats for review, and they only have to get um, final plat recordation on one phase, and it vests, that's the word I was looking for, it vests the entire preliminary plat. And since they already have them in, um, we've heard from the applicant that they plan on moving it forward, so we anticipate we'd be bringing that to you this spring, and then they have to record 90 days later. Okay. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. Councilman Stipp? I mean, Councilman Bazillo. <laughs> oh, we look you. alike. Okay, yeah. um, <laughs> Let's just talk again. Yeah. It's my understanding last time we had this before, so there was a timeline in which you were going to fly or wasn't going to fly. And if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it was around April sometime. Does my memory serve me right? Thank you. I'm going to defer to the applicant on the time. Because my question is, is it will, it will, it, it, does it die a natural death if it doesn't happen by April, this agreement? Uh, Mayor and Council Member Pizzillo, it's the um, April 29th is the date that we'll be coming back with the core agreement. Um, and in fact, just to uh, update a little bit, um, Sarah and I met with um, one of the uh, developers even today, and so we're very close to finalizing that. And so the 29th is the day we'll be coming back with the core agreement and all the associated development agreements that are tied to that core agreement. But is that a, is that a, a hard deadline if, if for some reason you don't have something by April 29th, it goes distinct? Or it, is there in... Yeah, no, I understand that, but it's my understanding there was a timeline associated with that where it was either going to happen by this date or it just wasn't going to happen. Is that, is that a correct assumption? This is an internal deadline that we've set for ourselves. Each of the development agreements are in a different stage. Some of the development agreements um, have expired two years ago. Some of them are in the fourth or the fifth amendment. What we're trying to do is bring all of the development agreements for the various uh, 16 parcels and bring them together so that they're at one equal footing and one equal stage with all of the same flexibility allowances uh, as we actually provide to all of our other customers that aren't part of West Goodyear. So, so the April 29th is internal. Mm -hmm. I'm just holding it. It's to me, it's, it's a permanent zone, but it's, it's your timeline. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Any other discussion? All right. Let's vote it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> We're all smiles here. All right. Let's go to 7.4 to consider approving the January 2016 budget transfer. Lori Regenroth, budget and research manager, will present. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, if you'll recall, last month we were able to bring the, tran the budget transfers to you on consent. This month there was a couple more uh, items that we felt uh, need might need a little explanation. Um, essentially, we're asking you to approve six budget transfers. Two are moves, uh, just moving budget from one department to another to go along with a change in a, a, who's managing a program or a service. Uh, two others are for grants. Uh, one is a carryover grant from the prior year. Um, then the other two items do use fund balance and are a little bit more complex. Uh, the first one is um, a $75,000 transfer from uh, a wastewater uh, capital fund. There's a fund that had a little bit of savings from prior year's projects uh, that has not yet been programmed. Uh, and uh, wastewater identified the need for monitoring wells associated with the Vados wells, excuse me, project. Uh, that particular, um, those monitoring wells were not requested in the original uh, work with the, the parties, uh, but it was determined later on that, a, that because of the Superfund site that the monitoring wells would be required. The department was unable to find savings in their own budget, uh, so they came to the finance department to see if we could assess them, assist them in finding funding. Uh, we were aware of this funding source and intended to close it out this year uh, through uh, existing projects or new projects that came up during the year. The other is a, an item for $110,000. It is funded in the capital uh, uh, expansion or uh, ex expense fund or CapEx fund for the stadium. That particular fund is part of the agreement with the teams. 
uh, essentially 250,000 a year goes into that fund. And then there's a replacement plan, similar to what we're doing with asset management. Uh, and the agreement calls for certain projects to be done. Uh, the, it, it, the items that are in the plan are required. The dollar amount might change. And the year may change a year or two in terms of when they actually have to happen, but they're, they're part of the agreements with the teams. So in this case, there's uh, field improvements to be done to the major league fields. Um, this item was included in the plan for FY17. However, in working with the teams, uh, the ballpark staff have determined that in order to get the work completed before spring training of 17, so spring training a year from now, they would need to start this project shortly after spring training of this year. So they've asked if they could uh, use existing fund balance in the capital fund, ex, ex, CapEx fund to go ahead and perform that project this year. It would have otherwise been proposed for inclusion in next year's budget as part of that program. So that's uh, what I have. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. And there's Thank you. Are department there representatives here. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? Okay, could I please, um, let's go on uh, just a moment here. Could I please have a motion and a second to approve the 2016 January budget transfers? I hear a motion. So moved. Second. I heard a motion from the Councilman Pazillo and a second from Councilman uh, Osborne. Open for council discussion. Councilman Gretchen. Councilman Campbell. Um, can you give me the rationale of moving the grants coordinator from the city manager's office to engineering, please? And is that her salary? Uh, that is the salary and related ancillary costs. Uh, thank you, uh, Councilmember Campbell, for that question. And actually, that position um, still handles all of the grant administration, but she also acts as the management assistant for engineering. So it's a dual purpose role, uh, and she has been able to uh, fulfill her uh, requirements um, and work with the other departments for the grants while still assisting uh, the engineering department with our uh, needs. So is she still going to be called grants coordinator? Yes. Okay, thanks. Any other question? Councilman Pazillo. Oh, just a comment. I, I, I like the form. It's very easy to read. I think it's, I think your improvement on showing the transfers and, the, and where the money's coming from, whether the description, whether it's real money or internal, I think it makes it real easy for the layman to read. So I'm going to give you kudos for the form. I really appreciate that. Thank you very Thank much. You. you can tell it by the questions on the dais. Councilman Stipp. I uh, echo that um, this format is 10 times easier to read and obviously far less uh, pages. <laughs> pages. Um, I've, over the last few days, have been corresponding with the city manager with a couple of questions regarding this. And just to make sure that I'm clear, these transfers have not yet occurred? Cor correct. These transfers have not yet occurred. I'm just going to review the list. The... the um... The one I'm not 100% sure is the Fire Uwazi grant um, because that was a carryover grant that we just missed it uh, in do preparing the technical budget. That work may have begun. I'm not sure. So that, that one has been moving forward, and that's due to just having not carried over the grant. Okay. But the other items are awaiting uh, council approval. We're, we're encouraging departments not to, uh, that since we're doing budget transfers every month, that there's no reason that we can't wait uh, and if they need to move forward sooner, they should come to you with a separate item requesting the budget transfer. Okay. So just for the rest of the council's uh, point of information, I guess, the questions that I asked specifically were, were related to the um, the 110000 for the stadium and the 27000 for the... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, the 75000 for the Vados injection. Um that those two items are fairly substantial in size and and philosophically should they be just included in a quick transfer report or should they be something more substantial for us to get the information so over the last few days we've been corresponding back and forth and um and i i 
personally don't know the answer to that, and I don't know that anybody has the actual answer to that question, but what I do appreciate is getting the information uh, in some greater detail, or at least publicly, we talk about what those, what, what those, what those transfers are, and that maybe someday we'll figure out whether those should be individual, uh, there should be a little mini something that comes with it, much like what we had tonight, the art project came in 10,000 under, we need 10,000 more, this is why, blah, blah, blah. These two projects are very similar and uh, the sidebar discussion we had before the meeting was we're talking about red apples and green apples, but we're probably still talking about apples. So um, maybe one day we'll have the answer to that question, but I just wanted to fill everybody else in um, and I greatly appreciate getting the information and, and having it for, uh, for tonight because it makes it easy to move forward. Any other comments? Well, let's vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Well, now we're at the end of the evening, so any comments from the council, accommodations, reports? Yes, Councilman Stipp. I do. I, I kind of alluded to it earlier, and, and uh, it, it's highly irregular, so I figured I'd take this time to, to uh, talk about it. This will be my last meeting until March 28th. Um, I'm going to call in for the meeting next week and perhaps one of the meetings, either the 14th or the 21st. I'm not sure yet. Um, you know, this is a great thing to do for the community as a council member. Um, but I, and I joke, I have to work for a living. And now um, the military work that I usually do over the summer when we're on break has been moved. Uh, so I will be in uh, Fort Polk, Louisiana for... Uh, majority of the of this time and will do my best to uphold what I've got but when you don't see me for a month every, you know where where are things at um, but I've had communication with the manager about keeping up on the information that are that's that's out there um, being very selective about what I'm missing for not calling in etc so um, just to let a the public know let my colleagues know um, I'm not taking a month-long vacation and getting out of Dodge. Um, but when you work for yourself, you have to go when the work is there, and now the work is there. So, Thank you, Bill. Councilman Pazillo? Um, I had the opportunity um, to go with the Avondale School District. They had a really nice program for Kids at Hope over at the Palm Valley Church in which, and I don't know if any of you have seen the movie McFarland, okay? It's kind of an uplifting story of, of kids at hope or those that are struggling to succeed. And the actual individuals that the story was about was at the event, the Diaz brothers. And they kind of told the story about how their coach kept pushing them. And the key was always you are champions to the kids because, you know, it's, it's an area of McFarland at the time. And he says they still some of them still live there in which um, – you know, they, they don't have the opportunities of a lot of other individuals, but the coach saw something in them. And I think he was telling me they haven't lost a cross-country race in I don't know how many years. But he kept pushing in them, champions, champions. And the reason why um, they had that, the Avondale School Directors had that event, is it kind of ties into their Kids at Hope in which, you know, you've got all these kids that you're trying to get them to live to their greatest potential, but there's a lot of negativity out there. And he was pressing teachers which I'm one of them myself, just happens in college, is that you've got to always encourage the kids to be the best they always can. Always positive message. The negative stuff has to slide. They're all champions. And it was very uplifting. In fact, uh, uh, kudos to our ballpark. Uh, they visited the ballpark, and, and, he, and he talked to the kids there at the ballpark. And one of the things he walked away with is that he said that the school, the kids out here in Avondale, one of the best behaved. They had them in the heat there for a few hours. And they were just so well behaved. And just to hear their story and how it was told by Disney and all um, it was uplifting. So hopefully the message of the teachers there, there uh, at the Avondale School District got the message. And I, I know I did. Very uplifting. And you hear today all this negative stuff. Negative, negative, negative. That's part of the problem, I think, with this country as it is. More positive, more focusing on you can do, not you can't do. So it was a great event, and I really appreciated the invite. Any other com comments? Yes, Councilman Osborne. 
Oh, I just, uh, you know, we had a lot of great, uh, great activities this, this last week. And, um, you know, it was really wonderful to, to be in the parade for Tale of Two Cities. You know, I don't know what the numbers were, but um, quite frankly, having a hundred entries. And, and after we got dropped off, I walked back and I got to see all the wonderful, wonderful entries that were in there. And, and you know, I'm telling you, it's, it's just not a parade unless there's a dragon. And so that was really kind of cool having that dragon. Um, Something else that, you know, uh, Joe, you're talking about building up kids and, and seeing such positive things. And something that, um, you know, I want to give some, some great accolades to is, is in the West Valley, there's a, a group of young men that are called the Mavericks. And um, I think there's about 45 guys. And there's Goodyear residents, there's Litchfield Park residents, they're just, you know, within here. And, and they're whole purpose is they've come together to go out and and raise money mostly for children's nonprofits and and Friday night I got to be with them as they were donating their different monies out to the groups and it's so so wonderful to see these these young men that were doing these things um, something that was exciting that they did also tell me there is that they're the ones that put on flavors of the West that we have at our ballpark and they were able to recruit the Gin Blossoms to come and, and be a musical group there. And that's pretty exciting to have. You know, it's an older group now, but it's a, it's a really fabulous group. And I think it's going to really bring a lot of people out there. Um, the other thing is that um, this week, ironically, is Twins Week. Oh. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> no. But last week, um, I was blessed with two new granddaughters, twins, and um, little Miss Mia is home with her mother, but Miss Emmeline is, is still in the hospital in the NICU, and so tomorrow evening after we celebrate our wonderful citizens that um, are graduating from our Citizen Academy, I will be back up there being the Mimi that I am, and uh, I just thought it was funny that this week was, was Twins Week, so uh, anyway, that's kind of, I've had a pretty exciting past week, so uh, that was all. That's wonderful. Congratulations, by the way, it's, uh, on the twins. And we're so glad everything went well. So, Councilman Campbell? Okay, I'll make mine really short. Um, this past week has been just a really busy week. Um, I attended the Assistant in Healthcare uh, Board, and uh, it was announced that we raised approximately $400,000 at our Super Bowl event at the end of January, which was fabulous. And... This uh, organization gives cash grants to uh, cancer patients who no longer are able to work, and they need money to either uh, pay for rent, pay for electricity, pay for food, or pay for babysitting. We don't let them use the money to pay for medical expenses, and um, we give the grants to anyone in uh, the greater Phoenix area uh, who needs financial assistance. Um, I also attended uh, the Westmark annual meeting, and that was interesting at um, ASU West. And um, I didn't learn too much, but I learned a little bit about all the freeways that are coming. Um, I also attended the um, uh, Leadership West Summit, which was absolutely wonderful. Um, Barbara, or um, Kurt Warner's wife was there telling her story of how she uh, graduated from high school, joined the Marines, married a Marine, had a baby. The baby had brain damage, and her husband left her, and she was left to raise this child, Josh, and um, how she raised Josh and put herself through nursing school, and then Kurt Warner came into her life and the rest is history. And she started this wonderful uh, 501c3 called Treasure House. And it's an organization where children like Josh can come and be around other children with disabilities similar to him so that they can have interaction and be loved and be part of society. And it was just, uh, it was just so interesting and so touching. And so I have found a new mission to work. Uh, like you need another one? <laughs> I have some ideas I'm working on, but it just is just so wonderful because you forget about the developmental disabled children and adults. And um, 
there's that's just part of our society that that we need to do more for and if we're able to do it I think that's why we're doing it Thank you. Uh, let's see uh, we had Comstat this week and it was wonderful we appreciate the police department doing that every monthly for us that's very interesting and um, that's about all I can think of I did a couple of more but that's enough great uh, I just want to congratulate on the parade it was fantastic great. so um, so it's over to you city manager mayor or members of the council just to round out a little bit on the tele two cities Estimated attendance was 9,000. So I don't know how the estimates come about, I, uh, but it, remember it was a parade plus also the event afterwards. And just a, a couple of things on that, and as was referenced by Council Member Osborne, about 100 entrants in the parade this year, which last year was a little over 80. So it, it is increasing. And the award winners. So cities are no longer in the running for these because we win them all the time. <clears throat> so as I understand that they've uh, uh, adopted a different approach as far as um, handing out the award winners. So best adaptation to the theme, Harvest Prep Academy, and there are four, by the way, total. Most entertaining, Fry's Sun City Palms. Best overall appearance, the Caribbean Zone. And outstanding marching band was the Tullison Elementary School. Uh, marching nice. band yeah. so uh, and in the back end of the parade we had 92 exhibitors uh, we had the two stages set up nine different cultural performances but as always a hit and you know mayor or council if you want to uh, talk about it the naturalization ceremony where we had a hundred uh, people become citizens of the United States and that's always a very uh, emotional um, part of this uh, this event so uh, that's my report on that there were not any follow-up items tonight uh, other than from the work session, there are, there's input that, that we'll um, take forward as well. Well, thank you. Uh, you're right. The naturalization ceremony is always very rewarding, and, and uh, wanna, I'm always happy to take part uh, because, as I say, and I always repeat it, my parents are from Greece. My father came over at 27. My mother came over at, uh, at a, just as about 11 years old. My father came through Canada. Uh, my mother came on Ellis Island. So uh, I always uh, think about them. And when I look out at that audience, I think uh, how my grandparents must have felt. Um, maybe the process was a little bit different and not so open as that was. But, uh, and, um, and they were different. And, and uh, people treated them differently. And they were from Greece. So whenever we talk about people having uh, different attitudes about people coming from foreign countries, um, it happens in every generation with every nation. So, but this was uh, really a great combination of, of uh, nations that were there, um, and it, it's just very rewarding. It's just God bless America, and I'm so glad I live in the United States and all of that. Cheryl Lynn, you have something to say? I did. Um, I, I, I enjoy. I, I don't know if enjoy is the right word, but I appreciate it. It's very moving to see the excitement of the. But I just wanted to comment. There were 31 countries represented in that ceremony that were being naturalized, and I thought that was quite impressive. Yeah, it was. It was amazing. So, so thank you very much. So, all right. So, future meetings before I adjourn the meeting is let's see. The next meeting will be a, a special meeting and a work session on February 29th, 2016. And uh, Bill, I wish you well on your trips, and we'll be looking forward to hearing you on the telephone. I, I can't imagine you're not going to call in. I will. On I'm sure there'll be time. Like yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So with that, I'm going to adjourn this meeting. Ooh. That's the one. This is the one that ends. Tonight?